We're still here at a chilly Colston Avenue, but the football was red hot this afternoon. It's Carl Shorten Athletic. By the odd goal in five, three two victors against Wingate and Finchley. I've been joined by the returning captain and goal scorer this afternoon, Paris Hamilton Downs. Paris, you've got a big grin on your face there, mate. Obviously, three points in the bag is lovely jubbly, but uh, we were made to work very hard for it, weren't we? Very, 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 very hard. Um, first half was extremely poor. Um, we knew we had to turn it around in the second half and we just about done that. So, yeah, three points, one to forget, really. Just got to move on to the next one and, and, and look ahead, really. Wingate came here and certainly held their own, didn't they? 100%. I mean, uh, when you look at the, uh, the league table, we thought it was a no-brainer, an easy victory. But then I saw a couple of posts uh, online uh, especially from Chad is saying you can't take it uh, easy, can't be complacent. And however, I thought Carl Shorten did take it very complacently, especially like within a few minutes, our goalkeeper pulled off a worldly save. What was the difference for you between the first half and, and the second half? Because it was a real game of two halves, to use that cliche. Massive cliche. I think you were red hot, red hot as how I felt in the first half, sitting up there watching. Um, Almost needed a defib at one point. Um, it was that stressful to look at and really unbelievable to see the way that we were performing. Um, yeah, we had to shuffle the back a little bit, as you know, uh, again through injury and illness and probably looked unusual, as, as we spoke about. But um, it, w it wasn't really any individual players. It's probably in the first half. There was 10 I could have subbed if, if it had been my choice at that time. And I, and I mean all ten. You know, nobody nobody came out of that first half with any credit at all, apart from Clayton, who obviously has made a world class save. Mm. And, and I mean world class. That first save was. Uh, I'm not going to use a cliche again, but Banks's against Pele weren't far off that, I think. Oh, wow. Uh, but yeah, and he's done that a number of times. So that, that could have been three 0 up at half time, and justifiably so, the way we were playing. So something had to change. Um, you don't often see sort of Peter lose it at half time, but he, he did a little bit. Uh, and again, you don't want to aim anything individually at any players, but you know we, we kind of keep stats, and the stats show that we were giving the ball away um, and too many times, so uh, and not winning our, our 50/50s, and, and that's something that we really talked about and worked on. And in a game like this, which we always know is, is a cliche, could be a, a banana skin. It's always a case of making sure that you don't go out and play that way. But we did. Wingate mm. didn't look like a side that were down near the bottom. They certainly didn't. Um their, their goal early on made a diff made a big difference to the game, um, but we seem to be more of a second half team, and the the two double substitution at half time I think made a huge difference. The one thing they did turn up was hungry, and and with no fear, and they played that way. You know, they they w like I said, they won every 50-50, and I think as soon as that starts happening, then gaps start to appear. Uh, you know, the, the number nine caused our, our backline problems. Very physical, very determined. And, and their midfield player, certainly the little number 10, was, was clever. He was popping into pockets, picking up the ball. And we weren't dealing with that. It, you know, it's one of those, like I said, something needed to change. I don't think it was complacency. I just think it was 10 players, which doesn't happen often, all, all having a bad game. Yeah. And no one could, could lift it. No one in the first half took, took a lead and changed it or, or could do something that inspired everybody else. Um, so, you know, Pete made those changes at half time and again, probably raised eyebrows when it was duds and cheats. Um, you're thinking, wow. Uh, you know, and, and I said to them that neither of them did anything wrong, but the balance of the team needed to be better. Um, so, yeah, bringing in Shaney because he's a bit more communicative uh, and Oliver for some more presence in the middle of the park. Um, you know, and it worked. We spoke to Keith as well, and I've spoken to a couple of the other players off camera as well. And all of you have, have held your hands up and said the first half performance was poor, which is quite refreshing to hear, actually. Um, what was the difference between that and then coming out in the second half, do you feel? Um, I don't know. We knew he was 1-0 down. And, and, and uh, <laughs> oh, is that Omar Karoma? Is that, is that Omar Karoma? Daniel Pap. <laughs> It's a new signer. Who's, who's this young man? This, this is like, young man, Jesus, <laughs> old man. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. <laughs> guys, guys, you know what? We've got a captain. He's not meant to be the captain because oh, Ricky's the captain. Yeah, Ricky's but he's got captain. more goals. He's got more goals. He plays at the back and he's got more goals than Ricky. Uh, what are you going to say about that? What are you going to say about that? Ricky? Nothing. I ain't got nothing to say. And you know what? When he gets in the box, when he gets in the box, you know what he wants to do? He wants to chop. <laughs> no, I want to win. 
Just pass the ball to me, I'll shoot, mate. Put me in the box. Go on, what are you going to say about nothing, that? Nothing, I ain't got nothing. Christopher, did you have a favourite goal that Carl Shorten scored this afternoon out of the three? Uh, yeah. Which one? Um, the Ricky goal. And why was it your favourite? Uh, because he cut inside and then just shot it into the bottom corner. He scored 11 goals so far this season. That's quite a lot, isn't it? Yeah. Ricky's one of my favourite players, but I thought he took it very, very well. He's back to uh, being the top club's top goal scorer now. He's joint with uh, Christy Patterson, 11 goals each. Yeah, no, it's, it's always a good, but you know, I know we're struggling for goals. I, th I think most Robin fans would agree. But we have so many, so many chances. It's just uh, the car short and way we always seem to struggle to put the ball in the back of the net. But Ricky's, when he's on the ball, it's very exciting. He's always willing to take a player on, and that's why that's why all the Robins fans love him so much. Yeah. I think in the second half, we are a second half team. I think that's fair to say. We seem to kind of pull it together in the second half, um, and uh, confidently we kind of went into the ascendancy with uh, the, the three goals that we scored. Their keeper, uh, it has to be said though, didn't make a save in the game. We just had three shots and struck three times, which is what you need to do, you know. I mean, to be fair, the goalkeeper pretty much saved Saved the penalty, didn't he? As well, it trickled in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would say, I would say that definitely that. You know, so very relieved to see that happen. So you say, you say the uh, penalty decision was a little bit lightweight. So from where, from where you were standing, what did it look like? I was just standing uh, by the seated area. So you know, I saw it quite well. It's just the reaction from the opposition players. They thought it was very, very lightweight. And obviously there's a bit of a scuffle with the handbags at t 10 paces. Uh, it definitely looked like he caught him and it was uh, a correct decision. Yeah. Was your heart in your mouth when you struck that penalty? Because from where I was sitting, it looked like the goalkeeper had saved it. Yeah, a little bit, <laughs> to be fair. I should have gone a little more central and I changed my mind a bit last minute, which I should never do. So I know I've done it last time. It, happened but luckily it just had enough power to go underneath it so yeah do you think you can make double figures this season that'd be your best ever goal return ever ever yeah hopefully we still got quite a few games to go so yeah I'm hoping I don't know if that was a turning point or the second goal was a turning point but um you know in a word sorry Jim yeah. the boss man bang who scored the second goal again for us <laughs> Own goal, I think, took a deflection. Own oh, goal, <laughs> official. <laughs> Sorry, Pete. Sorry, uh, Pete. No, no, to be fair, he, he done well. I thought he was going to pass or trump it to someone, but he pulled the trigger and then and he got the goal. <laughs> so, fair pay to Pete. I think he's picked up a few this season as well. Two or three now for him, is it? Well, well, he scored two goals this season. Yeah. And the other goal that he scored was against Wingate and Finchley. Oh, there we go. Yeah. yeah I can, remember. can we play them every week, he says. <laughs> I can hear him saying it from the dressing room. I can hear <laughs> He turns 40 before the end of the month, and yet he's still banging goals in, still running things from the middle of the park in the second half, wasn't he? Just a, just a word on, on Peter, the player. I said he wasn't mobile in the first half. You're going to show him that. He's going to like, oh, what are you doing? You know, he's he has been, um, you know, to keep fit as fit as he does at his age, that takes a special mentality. And, and, and I know what he does off the pitch. I know what he does even regarding his own personal lifestyle and how he takes care of himself. I know that he, he sacrifices time with his family, um, more so probably than any of us do and, and any of the other guys with theirs. And it's not to say I'm taking anything away from the players themselves because a lot of them do. But, you know, he, he conditions himself, he, he gets his mindset right. And, you know, I've been in this job, uh, in his job, and uh, in every other role I've been in, I've been in his role. And I know how tough that is. And, and he cares deeply about every single player at this club, right down to the to the youth players. You know, again, I've watched him working with them. He cares deeply. He has to make decisions. They might not always be the right ones. That's that's, you know, that's what football is. But he has to make those decisions. Mm. And and again, I'm not going to blow up his backside because it's it's not my nature. But you know, I, I repeat again, he's he's one of the reasons that you know. I enjoy being here uh, and I enjoy working with him. Um, he's honest, he's straight, people might not always like what he says. And like I said, we all make mistakes uh, in judgment. I've made many in my coaching career and managerial decisions that, that you don't get right. But you know, you've only got to look at the last three, four seasons, what's happened here. Um, but he's very demanding of the players. He, he won't let them off with anything and he's demanding of himself.
it got a bit spicy in the second half. A few yeah. tackles were flying in. Was it because, did you get the sense that it's because they were aggrieved about the penalty that was given away at the start of the second half? Because their number five, who eventually went off, started flying into a few tackles. Yeah, and pff, that's it. Well, he, he did and he, he got injured. So that was his problem. But I think they, yeah, they was very upset about the penalty. And I think Lewis did get touched. And if, if you get, get touched in the box, you're going to go down, really. So, yeah, silly to jump in and, and give away silly pens. And... And that's their problem really so if you want to start going around trying to smash people it's, it's, it's going to happen to you it's going to come back to bite you on the arm. I mean, there's a, a poor advertising hoarding just over there that took the full brunt of uh, a tackle that came in on Lewis like after the event so yeah yeah, yeah I think there was a bit bit of afters with him as well so he, he done well to just keep his head in the game and get on with the game so fair play to Lewis he done his bit and helped the team to pick up the three points